welcome to the latest in our series of webcasts ahead of this year's Scottish independence referendum. From our studio in Edinburgh, we're joined by the leader of the Better Together campaign, Alistair Darling. He's, of course, former Chancellor. Thanks very much uh, for joining us and uh, agreeing to answer some of these questions. Uh, the first then from Esther Davidson, who says, please explain in plain English, not economic gobbledygook, what Scotland brings to the UK table and why the UK will be better for retaining Scotland, not why Scotland will be better staying with the status quo. Well, I, a central part of my argument is that all four countries of the United Kingdom are better and stronger together. Uh, if you look at it in simple jobs terms, uh, many, many jobs depend uh, upon uh, firms being able to sell what they produce uh, to all parts of the country, a population of over 60 million people. questioner says all parties seem to agree that devolution was good for Scotland all parties seem to agree that giving extra powers to the Scottish Parliament will be a good thing for Scotland so why is giving the Scottish Parliament complete power to govern seen as a bad thing that's from Ronnie Heaps now my argument against independence is that it it, it puts a barrier between us and the rest of the UK in terms of our firms uh, selling goods goods and services uh, um, the Prime Minister had a very successful international visit in this last week to Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> and there she spoke publicly about her commitment. And it's very important, I think, this commitment not to have a hard border on these islands, that there should continue to be free movement of peoples on these islands, and that trade should be protected and enhanced. So, given that people will be watching this not just in Britain, but also in Ireland, would she take the opportunity now to explain how she will deliver these sensible and important outcomes? Yeah. 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 These are absolutely the outcomes that we want to see. I was very pleased to meet with the Taoiseach and to discuss with him the joint intent that both his government and mine have to ensure that we don't see a return to the borders of the past in Northern Ireland. And just to, to say that, of course, we focus on the land border that, takes, that is between Northern Ireland and, and the Republic of Ireland. Of course, the issue of movements from Ireland does affect other places as well. It affects ports in Wales and, of course, uh, Stranra. So it is an important issue for us. And we have agreed the uh, work that we're going to do together to deliver what I believe will be uh, as frictionless as possible a border. Uh, and also, one of the objectives that I set out in my plan for our negotiating objectives is to retain the common travel area. Angus yeah. Robertson. Uh, and we on these benches very much welcome what the Prime Minister has just had to say on all of these issues. And of course, we also welcome the intensifying of negotiations between the UK Government and the devolved administrations ahead of triggering Article 50. So the Prime Minister has very helpfully explained that it is perfectly possible for parts of these islands to be in the single market, without hard borders, with free movement of people, and at the same time protect and enhance trade with one another. This is very, very welcome, Mr Speaker. So will the Prime Minister give a commitment to work with the Irish Government and a commitment to work with the Scottish Government to deliver all of these things, or will we just have to get on with it ourselves? Well, first of all, first of all, the right honourable gentleman is right that following the meeting of the JAMC plenary session on Monday morning, we did agree to an intensification of discussion on issues uh, related to the uh, bringing back of powers from Brussels and as to where those powers should uh, lie within the United Kingdom, to intensify that in the run-up to the triggering of Article 50 and beyond the triggering of Article 50. Scotland would have less influence in the European Union, for example. You would accept that I Scotland would still be in Europe. Well, well the, 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 I, I haven't the slightest doubt uh, that um, Europe would eventually readmit Scotland. Scotland would eventually be a member, but the argument from the other side is that Scotland would not be put out of the European Union, that Scots are citizens of the EU, and therefore they would continue to be. Do you think that's not the case? Do you think that Scotland would be expelled somehow? This is uncharted. This is uncharted territory, uh, because uh, you know, whilst member states, uh, new member states, have been accepted, this will be the first time that an existing member state split.
Tom McCartney, who says, I for many years believed that the regions of England should be strengthened rather than everything being centred in London and the South East. Could not a newly independent Scotland act as a counterbalance to the continuing drift of all economic activity south? The entire British Isles could benefit. And that's true, isn't it, that the British economy is unbalanced and that London and the South East is by far the most thriving part of the economy uh, and Scottish independence might be able to counterbalance that. Dunn says that the White Paper uh, gives voters a pretty clear idea of the government's proposals if we vote yes. What additional powers does Westminster propose to give us if we well, vote no? What we're talking about is the nationalists got elected in 2011. They're quite entitled to put to the people the independence. You know, they're entitled to put that. The other side to that are those of us who actually say, no, this is not in Scotland. So it's independence or the status quo, is it? You, you've, no, got, you've got nothing else to add no. to that. Black says, if there's a no vote in September, can you guarantee that it will be business as usual in Scotland, i.e. no budget cuts? And, and Dennis Partington uh, says, will a no vote mean that the block grant to Scotland will be cut? Well, look, on, on the latter point, uh, there are absolutely no plans from any other political party uh, are uh, have any plans to change the block grant or the barn formula. In relation to the budgetary position, you know, there's not a country in the world at the moment that isn't facing budgetary pressures. And so whatever we vote for in September, the economic conditions, which in the last five years has been you know, pretty traumatic, they're not going to suddenly go away. And, but at the same time, you've got the opportunities and the security that come from being part of something bigger. You know, I've just been you know, talking in the last few minutes about the positive case for jobs. Bruce Davidson. You deserve the truth. If we vote to come out of the biggest free trade bloc anywhere in the world, there will be tariffs put on British businesses. They won't tell us how much our economy will be hit by. They won't tell us how many jobs might go. They won't tell us what they're going to replace a single market with. Now, I know that the EU isn't perfect, but the benefits far outweigh any costs. We refuse to dismiss the experts. We listen to them. And the economists, the scientists, the business leaders, the trade unions, the health professionals, they all agree that you are better off in. There is nothing, there is nothing more positive than having a stronger economy, supporting jobs and opportunities. comes to keeping our country safe and secure, I want to listen to the experts. So when the head of GCHQ says we're safer in the EU, I listen. When five former NATO chiefs say we're safer in the EU, I listen. When the head of Europol, who's a Brit, says we're safer in the EU, I listen. When the head of MI5 and MI6 says we're safer in the EU, I listen. And when all of our major allies, America, Canada, Australia and New Zealand, say we're safer in the EU, I listen. And if it comes to a choice, if it comes to a choice to listening to all of these people, even if they're experts, or listening to these three about who keeps my family safe, I'm going to vote for them every single day of the week and twice on a Sunday. Right. Don't risk it. Because they lied about the costs mm -hmm. of Europe. They lied about Turkey's entrance to Europe. They lied about the European army because we've got a veto over that. A positive case for our influence in Europe and our influence in the world for that matter. Kenneth Braze says, could Scotland be a successful independent country, yes or no? See, I've never argued that Scotland couldn't go it alone. After all, they are asking us, should we do something? The most fundamental decision we'll take in our lifetime. You know, you're, they're not going to get away with saying, but we've just got to accept what they say you know, in, in a white paper. At the end of the day, what matters is what the majority of people in Scotland want.